on August 9th. The initial working group results were released by the IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change. There's very little we wanted to see from an academic standpoint in the report, but in their maneuvering into political paradigms, the shills of propaganda left a mountain of evidence in their wake. They released over a thousand pages, but it's easily broken down into chapters in the full report. And one thing I did expect to see, but which somehow got left out of the policymaker's summary, is that every model overestimates heat when run in reverse to simulate the past, indicating the oversensitivity to CO2. I admit, I got very excited at Chapter 6, short-lived climate forcing, figuring we were going to discuss the recent discovery of light speed forcing of the atmosphere during space weather events with instantaneous chain reactions from the ionosphere to the troposphere. I at least thought they would include the rapid forcing through the global electric circuit of clouds and surface temperatures, lightning and storms. Nope, nothing of the sort. The solar discussions in Chapter 6 surround solar geoengineering, which took my excitement and turned it upside down. Really, they lay out the majority of what you need to know in Chapter 1, context and methods. Here is where something utterly atrocious happens. Imagine my excitement when I read that solar forcing will include both UV radiation and particle forcing, our number one wish for this upcoming report since the publication Mathis et al. 2017. They were going to be using the very publication we've identified as the game changer four years ago. But then you read through it. And where on earth is the actual particle forcing? I'm not going to show every page, but in Chapter 1, Chapter 7, in the supplemental information and the appendices, I'm not seeing anything to indicate they actually used particle forcing data sets. All discussion surrounds irradiance, not joule heating. Slow trickle-down heating, not the rapid energy conversion from the solar wind directly into the magnetospheric and ionospheric system, which works the entire atmosphere through the columns of the pressure cells, which are dominated by the global electric circuit, down in high pressure, up in low pressure. These systems dynamically affect the lower atmosphere, both directly and indirectly, and so does the polar cusp, which NASA once called our magnetic portal to the sun. It fluxes with particle energy every eight minutes, none of which is in the models, or the solar wind contribution to the auroral zone energy, even though they now know full well what this exact same energy means for Jupiter, an answer to the 50-year-old mystery of why the atmosphere is eight times hotter than they thought it should be. They know that tropical storms around the world are tied to solar activity, and they've known this for quite some time. It is a shame that these connections were not better studied since the well-described patterns struck exactly again in 2017, coincidentally during the greatest solar flares in 12 years. This subfield has progressed a good deal, but I suppose that's not climate science or the extreme weather portion that they wanted to put in their report. Everything identified and verified as a correlation and which has been confirmed and mechanistically studied in the same journals alongside the climate reports cited by the IPCC report, missing. The majority of the solar forcing is missing from the models and has been missing from the models and continues to be the cause of their need to attribute aspects of climate change to humans that do not belong. By the way, this circled area is what mainstream climate science uses for solar forcing, nothing else. But wait, you might say, I saw galactic cosmic rays on your list and indeed the report addresses those, to which I respond, well, no, not really. They do an okay job framing the debate up to about 2013, as we focus on the last paragraph with the highlight. At that point, they say the field was divided, and then they go on to say that since 2013, the field has concluded that there is not substantial climate forcing by cosmic rays, and so they've used particle forcing and they found nothing. Except that's not even close to the state of the field. Page 137 of our Weatherman's Guide to the Sun textbook the section addresses this very conflict in the field that they identified for 2013. I went over the disagreements and at the very bottom there you can see I called it 2014, but either way, we are seeing eye to eye up to about 2013 or 2014. Interesting that the IPCC just says the published literature debunked the idea and they gave no citations that highlighted most important section, no citations like they do everywhere else in the report. 
Well, I've got some for you, and I can only tell you that since these papers were published, there have been even more to add than the next edition of the book. Not only is the trend towards the affirmative a positive correlation, but they are figuring out the minutiae of the mechanisms, again, in the same journals alongside the other climate papers and folks. It's not just the cosmic rays ionizing dust and making it more attractive to water vapor, and it's not just their creation of condensation nuclei or their effect on other aerosols. The sun and earth play in this game as well. Solar energetic particles in Van Allen Belt electrons, which can be forced into the atmosphere during impact from solar storms, both are tied to cloud fractions and opacity. They literally just made up the exact opposite of the truth and put it in the report and hope the world forgot those other papers existed. They had nothing to cite of their own for their claim, and they eliminated a major element of the climate game with what is at best an epic science failure, and at worst, a lie. I admit, even where they acknowledge and have acknowledged solar forcing of major oscillations and cycles, there's little room for this in their models. It's just sort of a pat-on-the-back acknowledgement. The totality of solar forcing remains unappreciated, and for cosmic rays, a great academic disservice has been done. And so now we go back to our climate science failure chart, and let's see how the report runs down the list. A1. They really did not confront the model failures other than to say, we now have more certainty in our projections. Most of the literature we've seen in the major journals this year and last year have strongly expressed the bias and uncertainty and they've recognized it's a much harder puzzle than they imagined. None of that is in this report. We shared their acknowledgement of A2, the failure reconciling the past models. They of course saw no reason to let that stop their key talking points. A3 and 4, CO2 sensitivity and cloud uncertainty get paid lip service only. They acknowledge places of needed improvement, but ignore what those mean for the larger models. And while they did move slightly towards lower sensitivities overall, A5, the reality of the numbers and likelihoods is so politically exaggerated in the discussion and the talking points for policymakers, I have difficulty believing what I'm reading. In general, they did not really fix the core problems with the models and how they address CO2 or clouds, and their portion on the cryosphere, A8, Let's just say melting polar ice triggers cooling isn't exactly their new slogan, again, despite what the peer-reviewed literature says. And then the B-list. Oh goodness, what a miserable performance by the IPCC. Volcanic cooling is what it is, but they did not appropriately treat solar particle forcing or galactic cosmic rays, once again. The Earth's magnetic field strength is MIA in the report. You'd think they had no idea it was changing. And every single rapid forcing mechanism using the global electric circuit is left out of the report as well. This is the mechanism venue for the statistical correlations discovered across the B-list. And right now, a significant number of subfields in this science are being utterly disrespected. Folks, I haven't seen less effort at academic honesty since they tried coming after me. Yes, there are IPCC authors that tried in that event. It is a nightmare that the science has once again been ignored, and they will claim that our plea for peer-reviewed papers is our ignoring science. It is a nightmare that policy will be directed by 100% false information in some cases and a flood of half-truths in others. The data, the mechanisms, the equations, all there for the sun and cosmic rays, and the IPCC simply ignored them. This is one of the most shameful moments in the history of science. Good job, Earth. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.